Me personally, I like to use partitions just for consistency and because I'm a crazy person. So the ASUS board over here strangely just calls it NVMe for data. As opposed to what? NVMe for waffles? As you know, here at level one, we have a lot of very powerful systems that we use for getting actual work done. And this, this is a 14 core Intel system, but this video applies to pretty much any higher end system, even the higher end AM4 systems. This is getting Linux set up with RAID because RAID. Most newer higher end Macs use a striped set of SSDs for more raw speed. Effectively, it's RAID 0. So at least it's RAID 0 in hardware. It's pretty fast and the reason they did that is because the higher core count systems from, well, both Team Red and Team Blue, Intel and AMD, demand faster disk performance if you're gonna keep the CPU busy. So, I thought I'd give it a spin on the new Ubuntu 20.04. It's not, I guess, technically out when we're recording this, but hey, experiments. So my current favorite is the one slot card from Gigabyte in terms of being able to use four NVMe on a single PCIe X16 card, but this system is set up with the MSI Aero. It works just as well. It's got a big old heat sink. To get this working, to get to where we are now, I've already set the mode in BIOS. It's in an X16 slot. That's four groups of PCIe X4. Just because it physically looks like an X16 slot doesn't mean that you've got 16 lanes to the CPU. And if you're gonna use four NVMe as I have, you're gonna need all 16 lanes. So. To use one of these cards populated with four NVMe, you need to make sure that you're using a slot that has 16 PCIe lanes available. Generally, only enterprise grade cards that have an onboard PLX uh, bridge will operate at like X8 or maybe even X4 and then you're gonna lose some real performance there. Now, I'm not using Intel or uh, Intel VROC or AMD RAID. Those are sort of proprietary options from Intel and AMD for NVMe RAID. So if you have the option in BIOS for that, don't use it. The ASUS board over here strangely just calls it NVMe for data. As opposed to what? NVMe for waffles? From the Linux Live USB, you can just run LSPCI and verify that you can see the four NVMe drives. If not, recheck your BIOS settings. For the setup here, we've got four Toshiba 512 gig NVMe. Now for the rest of this video and the guide on the level one forum, I'm gonna walk you through setting up RAID on a fresh install of Ubuntu 20. So generally though, you can apply this guide to pretty much any other Linux distro. It's conceptually the same. It's just a little bit of the window dressing that's different. I also wanna point out, if you've got four NVMe and you wanna set it up, at least as of right now, Ubuntu 20 supports ZFS on root, meaning you can run ZFS as your main file system. Now ZFS is awesome because it combines the redundancy information and a file system all in one thing. So I love ZFS, I've done a ton of other videos on ZFS. If you can use ZFS, Generally, that's pretty good. Generally, that's what I'd recommend. But, you know, for this situation, uh, maybe we want to look at Linux MD. I mean, Linux MD doesn't have a billion dollars of development in it like ZFS does, but hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers, it's fine. So with this four NVMe setup, we could run RAID 1, meaning that we've got three mirrors of our data plus the main one, RAID, RAID 0 plus 1 or RAID 10, meaning a stripe of mirrors, redundancy and speed in RAID 5, uh, or, you know, RAID 5 really gives you some redundancy and mostly capacity. Technically you could do RAID 6, but a stripe of mirrors is gonna be almost, uh, is gonna be faster and better in almost all scenarios. Now, conceptually understanding what we need to do before we start is important. There's the bootloader, the boot partition, and the root file system. Optionally, you could have other mount points for your root, but you know, for example, setting up slash home to be its own device or partition is tremendously helpful if you distro hop and you wanna separate your home directory and your files from like the rest of the operating system. Uh, you know, whatever, that's fine. The UEFI in the boot process will hand off to the bootloader. Now, right now, the default on Ubuntu 20 seems to be Grub2. Grub2 doesn't understand Linux MD, Linux software RAID, basically, but it can understand both EFI partitions and EXT partitions. Normally, with a single NVMe, you might have an EFI partition, which is formatted as MS-DOS FAT, which contains just enough info to be able to mount the partition where the kernel and the initial RAM disk are stored. The Linux kernel, that's Linux. That's the program that manages all the other programs and stuff that you might run. 
And the initial RAM disk is a file that contains all of the modules and software components and everything else that help you boot the system up, or at least that helps the system boot up, that aren't baked right into the kernel. Now for us, it is critically important that the initial RAM disk contain MD admin, MD ADM, and the tools for managing Linux software RAID arrays. The kernel modules, such as you know RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID whatever, RAID 4, 5, 6, uh, and the configuration files that tell the kernel and tell MD admin how to assemble those RAID devices. So that's, those things have to be in the initial RAM disk. So we need a boot partition. The boot partition is not the EFI partition, and it's probably gonna be a simple EXT formatted partition about one gigabyte in size. And that is nowhere near as complicated for the system to deal with as the unassembled RAID array. So the step-by-step -step process is linked below on the level one forum. But it is a little odd because basically you boot from the live USB, but before you run through the installer, first set up partitions identically across all of your devices. So we've got our EFI partition, our boot partition, and then our you know, RAID partition. Then create the RAID array, array from the large partition on the devices. Oh, wait, <laughs> there's, there's no installer, there's no MD admin that's available from the terminal, but you can just run the terminal from the live USB and apt install MDADM. And there are also some not so well documented gotchas too. For example, Linux MD seems not to work well if you just give it the raw devices. So don't be tempted to do that if you have another small drive in your system that you would be tempted to put your boot partition on. Don't, don't do that. When you create slash dev slash MD0, for example, it could be MD1 or MD127 or MD anything, you can use GDisk on it and create partitions, or you can just format slash dev slash MD0. Although me personally, I like to use partitions just for consistency and because I'm a crazy person. So. With the array created, you format everything. The EFI for, uh, partition gets formatted as FAT and KFS.FAT. Then I usually do EXT2 out of habit for the boot partition. And you can let the Linux installer format the big MD array. So go through the installer, set the partitions as I've described in the how-to, and the installer is gonna crap out at the end. The reason is because it tried to set up Grub but Grub doesn't understand what to do with the MD disk without the MD admin utils installed. Wait, did we, did we already install those? No, no, The system is mounted, the new system is mounted at slash target, but you can cheroot there as in the guide on the forum and then apt install MD admin again. This is done twice because the second time you're actually installing it to the system that's being set up by the installer. It's not the, the installer itself, it's another system. And then you also have to make sure that you get the modules in Etsy modules, and then you run grub install and update the initial RAM FS. And so if you're paranoid, you can also do, use LS RAM, uh, LS init, uh, LS the init RAM disk and look for the modules and configuration to be on there. Once you're satisfied, reboot. Something goes wrong and you at least get the grub prompt. You can explore manually typing in some magic words to get into your computer and you know get it to boot. Stuff like uh, Linux, open parentheses, HD3, comma, GPT-1, slash VM liners, and you know, setting the initial RAM disk and doing that other stuff in the guide for troubleshooting, you get in some ODXD2, just, just check out the guide. It's, it, it gets a little hairy, but it's useful to know how to manipulate Grub manually like that and have some understanding of what's going on. Now, there might be an easier way to do this, but at least you've got maybe hopefully an understanding of what's happening under the hood when you're setting up Linux multi-disk. And I know other distros make this a lot easier. In fact, the server version of Ubuntu makes it a lot easier to set this up as well. But I thought this would be interesting to do with Ubuntu 20. And once you understand how to do it, it's really not that bad. So I don't know. Big thanks to our patrons and supporters on Floatplane for doing this. Turns out this video was actually helping somebody on the forum set this up and it was like, you know, I bet I could turn this into a video. And it wasn't even for Ubuntu 20, it was actually for a different distro. But with Ubuntu 20 release kinda on the horizon, I thought this might be a useful video to do. And big kudos to the Ubuntu installer team's, you know, uh, work that they've done on the new installer because it now has a safe graphical mode option in the installer. I think every Linux distro needs this option. Some do, this is a new feature relatively for Ubuntu, so I'm always gonna praise it every time I see it, even though I think it, it's, it's sort of there and then came back and then disappeared and then came back again. Safe graphics, safe graphics, safe, safe graphics. Every, every Linux installer needs safe graphics or a good text mode installer. I would accept a good text mode installer. That would also be completely fine. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you found this guide useful or if you want to support our work or the other stuff that we do, I'm gonna to try to get more of these out. Join us in the forums at level one text, full plane, Patreon, whatever. 
I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. I'll see you in the forum.